Hi everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to use this low gelling temperature agarose. The reason why we need to use this is because I just performed a PCR and one of the results I got, maybe you can see here, has two bands right next to each other and I need to isolate the one that's right here. And to do that, I have to use low gelling temperature agarose. If you look at this image, you're gonna actually see that there are double band formations with the second and third ones as well. But I can redo the PCR at 50 Celsius degrees and I'm not gonna get any bands for these specimens. But the first one, I can only perform it with 48 or 45 Celsius degrees, otherwise it doesn't work. And when I perform it at 45 degrees, I get two bands and I only need one of them. To isolate, you have to use low gelling temperature agarose. So to start off with, I have one XTAE buffer, 35 ml of it, and then I have my low gelling temperature agarose, 0.53 grams, so about half a gram. Temp melting egg rose only. One percent ethylene bromide, five microliters. Only one. Let it wait for 20 minutes. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. It's not jiggly anymore, but we're gonna take it to the fridge so it hardens even more. We'll come back in 10 minutes. So these results you see over here are coming from gel electrophoresis of this post-PCR products. We will use the same products and run them on low melting temperature agarose now. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Let's open the fridge. It looks like it's solid now. Now instead of putting five, I'll put 10 microliters of each PCR product. All right, next up, let's close the lid. All right, so this is done. Let's turn off the, the machine. Let's take this off. Now we'll take this plate to the dark room. All right, so now we're in the dark room. This is the UV box we're gonna use. So let's slide our plate on top of it. Let's be careful because this is quite fragile. Once we turn this on, it's going to create this purple light but before doing that we need to we need to use this uv protection um, shields what we're going to do is grab a sterile pipette tip find the bend that's going to be created and then just poke it hold it like this and transfer it into a sterile tube As you can see, the bends are right here, and we're gonna try to catch this one right there. We'll be super quick. This should be good. Overexposing yourself to UV can damage your eyes. I see that amount. I will extract just a little bit more. 
So let's repeat the process. Let's grab a new tip. some more yeah that's visible and then let's just leave it inside the tube without touching it anywhere all right so we're good now let's go back to the lab all right back to the lab turn off the hot plate to 56 celsius let's grab some ae buffer now, AE buffer right here, we're only gonna need 50 microliters. And then just put it into the 1.5 ml tube. So right now what we have is two tips and 50 microliters of AE buffer. Now, let's grab a new tube, take one of these high pad tips out and leave it here. So what we're gonna do is basically put this into the hot, onto the hot plate. 56 Celsius degrees is enough to melt low gelling temperature agarose. And at 56 Celsius, we're just gonna pipette it out. So draw out any of the contents that's stuck at the top tip of the pipette tip. And then we're gonna repeat the process to increase the yield with this one. Because now I have two pipette tips that has the uh, DNA bent. Only one of the tubes has AE buffer in it, and this is just waiting for the other one to be done. Let's give it 10 minutes. All right, it's been close to 10 minutes. Now we're gonna grab a P1000 pipette. Takes out, all we need to do is push out what's on the pipette tip. Now right now, what as you might see, there's nothing on the pipette tip anymore. Let's repeat the process with the second one. You can see here, this pipette tip clearly has something on it. Let's put it on the in the AE buffer. Put it on hot plate. We'll come back in five minutes. All right, we're back five minutes later. Let's take this out. Again. Pipette and pipette tip goes in and just squeeze it out. There's nothing here. So everything is inside that tube now. That's what we always wanted. Now it's time to label and do one more round of PCR. Now I labeled it, it says the label number and 16S only because that's the only thing that's found in that band. Let's put it into the centrifuge to mix everything before we take it into the DNA, um, to the PCR. Now I have my master mix ready. Let's follow the same recipe, 23.5 microliters of master mix into the each PCR tube. Now at the next step, normally we would be putting 1.5 microliters of DNA extractions. And instead of putting the DNA extraction now, I will use this solution that I just prepared. All right, right here, the first one is the one that I just repeated because of seeing double vents of the gel electrophoresis. This is my positive control, positive control again and the negative control, and let's take this. So I took it, put it onto my centrifuge. Let's take it out. All right, so the first PCR I did was on 45 Celsius at 38 cycles. This time I will do 45 Celsius and 45 cycles. Enter. 
Alright, good to go. And here are the results. As you can see, the first one was, a, was the one that was getting double bends. Second is the positive. Third one is the positive. And then the fourth one was the negative. It's a perfect example of how to use low temperature gelling agarose.